Hi folks, thanks for joining me. Today I want to talk about the Nautilus Lifeline Marine Rescue GPS unit, the technical side of it. I already covered in another video the introduction to it, so this one is going to be how it works, the frequency it works on, the MMSI system, the AS, AIS system, the DSC system, how it all ties in and works and how you could benefit from using this. So My name is Ron and I have a passion for the ocean and its marine life as you could tell from the videos on this channel. My goal here is simply to continue sharing the knowledge I have gained from the countless hours above and below the waterline. I'm going to break this video into two parts. One, the terminology related to this unit, and two, the programming and use of the Nautilus Lifeline. This marine rescue GPS unit works by sending out a man overboard digital text message via the VHF frequencies to an AIS and DSC enabled receiver. Let's start with GPS. We all know by now that this stands for Global Positioning System. This is what allows men to now drive for miles and miles without having to stop and ask for directions and of course avoid taking the long scenic routes. VHF of course refers to very high frequency. Let's take a quick look at the radio frequency allocations and how you use and benefit from this every day. So looking at the hand-drawn radio frequency allocation chart, we have ELF, SLF, ULF and then very low frequency and that's 3 to 30 kilohertz and that's where the human hearing occurs. LF was used mainly for navigation and then we would come to the MF, HF, VHF bands and MF was used primarily for our purposes uh, to be able to listen to the AM radio. Then we had 2.182 in the HF frequency range and that was an emergency and still is an emergency HF frequency for maritime distress signals. Then we jump to the one we need to talk about today and that's the VHF range. That's 30 to 300 megahertz. You might find, for instance, the FM frequency band. Some of you still listen to the FM radio in your car, I think. Uh, between 88 to 108 megahertz. The aircraft would communicate with the tower or aircraft to aircraft between 118.1 and 123 megahertz. And then you have the marine channels and that would be channel 16, for example, it's found at 156.8 megahertz. Channel 70 is used for the DSC communication and the AIS communication takes place on channel 87 and 88, which would be 161.975 uh, megahertz or 162.025. Then we go up to the UHF frequency range, which is 300 megahertz to three gigahertz. And our EPIRB signals would be transmitted over the 406 megahertz frequency. MOB is a term used in the marine world to indicate that there is a man overboard either as a distress signal or to mark a particular spot. This can be used verbally over your VHF or HF radio frequency. It can be done digitally using the DSC system and this prefix of 972 indicates a man overboard or you can use the MOB key on the GPS units for instance to mark a position that you want to mark really very quickly. MMSI is the Maritime Mobile Service Identity. This is similar to the telephone number registry, such that each person is assigned a unique ID for their vessel. And this is used in the maritime industry to identify that particular vessel and operator. DSC stands for the Digital Selective Calling. So when using the MMSI system, you can send a unique text message to another MMSI registered radio giving digital text information. AIS stands for Automatic Identification System, especially the larger ocean going vessels and or a passenger vessel will always have this identification number and other vessels will automatically receive transmissions over the VHF frequencies 
and therefore know where the ship is, the course it's on, the heading, the speed, and so on. EPIRB, as it's commonly referred to, would be an emergency position indicating radio beacon, and this operates, as I mentioned earlier, on the 406 MHz band. Next, we come to the programming and usage of the Nautilus lifeline. Out of the factory, the unit comes with its own unique MID number. All the user would need to do is insert the batteries and simply press the help button to send out a 972 coded man overboard message to all ships using the AIS system. This would send a position and distress call. The position would be good to 1.5 meters approximately indicating that someone is overboard and in distress. For the second mode of operation, if the user of the Nautilus lifeline is in international waters or permitted to use the DSC coded transmissions, then setup is very easy. First of all, you enter into the App Store, whether you're using iOS or Android, enter into the App Store, find Nautilus lifeline, just enter it to the top, find it here. I already have it installed, so I'll open it and it'll ask you for your serial number. Now your serial number is located here. So I'll just put that in quickly. So we got, remember my serial number is different from your own. You must enter the number that you have, not my number here. When you try to sync them, it will not work. Press next to continue. I'm going to choose international. If you use in Canada or Europe, you can't use the DSC function because of their local regulations. So I'm going to go to international. You have a choice of AIS and DSC, AIS only or DSC only or USA. The recommendation is to just use international, which I'll click on. Enter the ship MMSI. I'll put in the numbers 000 to clear the MMSI to show you how it'll work without a ship's MMSI number inserted. We'll do that in the next step. So click next. There we go, international. Ship's MMSI is zero, zero, is so on. Declare it. Turn on your marine rescue GPS unit. So we're gonna open the unit. Press the blue button to turn it on. You'll hear click, click, it's on. Now we want, we want to do is we want to shield it from direct sunlight. I've got sunlight here but I'll sort of shield it like that. Hold your mobile device, that's this, over the marine rescue about two to six inches away at the antenna pocket. So I'm gonna be pointing it in here. You can see the chip in there and that'll read it. And I'm gonna be using the light from my mobile phone, smartphone to program that. So the information is in here already. So let's see how we could best do this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn off my lighting because you want a darker environment so i'm going to point this light at there so let's click on program so we should have it here and we try to stay still as it programs yes i saw a flash there you go so it's flashed so that means it's now programmed and I can turn this off. So I'll just go back, close this up for a minute, and we'll test the whole system. So here we see in the international setting with the serial number inserted, the device sends out a man overboard distress signal with my position accurate to 1.5 meters to any ships or vessels that will receive an AIS signal. And in this mode, it'll also send out a DSC signal to VHF radios that are so equipped to receive that information and data. For my third setup, what I'm gonna need is my VHF radios, MMSI registered number. Each country is different and you can have a different registration as per your country guidelines. You'll have to check that. So I'm gonna enter and open the Nautilus GPS app. I'm going to open my Nautilus Lifeline unit. I'm going to need this. 
I'm going to turn it on one time. Enter your serial number. So, of course, if you're starting from scratch, I would enter 171987287257. Remember, you need your own special number. You're not using mine. 757. All right, next. Now, I'm in the U.S., so I'm going to use the U.S. If you were at the Galapagos Islands and you're on that ship, you'd be international. And you're going to use next ship's MMSI number. Now, in my case, my MMSI number is... Remember, this is my unique number. You're not using my number. Next. So now... I've set my MMSI number and I'm going to set my region as international. I'm going to use this. I'm going to set it up here in position and I'm going to line up my flash from my phone with this photo cell here. I'm going to line it up. I'm going to program. Right, I got a flash. Okay, so let's test it now. So we do have the flashing, indicating it's sending a call. And you can see on my radio, I am getting the call directly from my marine unit. So here's an example of the usage of this marine rescue GPS unit as a self-reliant diver, sometimes doing advanced dives. I will be diving the Juno ledge. You can see it indicated on the chart that I provided. And this is courtesy Navionics application on my phone. And here I'm doing the ledge where it's washed by the Gulf Stream currents. So my buddy, who is the captain on the boat, will be following my dive float on the surface. If for whatever reason I'm separated, then when I surface, if the boat is not over me, I can press the distress signal. The message will first be relayed to my VHF radio that you see pictured here. And the dive captain will then know that I am located at the coordinates indicated. He can come over, pick me up. This message will be sent only to my radio for the first 30 minutes. And then once the acknowledgement is received and I'm picked up, it will then stop sending a, a distress signal. Otherwise, after 30 minutes, it will send to all AIS equipped vessels as well as the Coast Guard using the DSC function and the AIS function. Thanks for looking. I do hope that you found the info in this video useful and if so please consider giving it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with your buddies and subscribing even to the channel. If you have any questions, any comments, feel free to leave it in this section below and I'll be sure to get back to you on them. I do want to say a special hello and shout out to a couple guys one notably a mentor uncle ian hart 9y4 india hotel who in the days when we didn't have access to the internet we just had these old britannica encyclopedias his door was always open even after hours after he worked all day to talk about amateur radio and uh, the physics and science of this also, the guy who helped me through my uh, City and Gills radio operator exam, Anthony Limak, 9Y4 Alpha Lima. What a guy. May he rest in peace. And of course, to my cohort, <laughs> 9Y4 Delta Gulf. What can I say, Dev? Thanks for all the help and guidance you gave me in the amateur radio field. Um, in the picture, you had my ICOM 720A. And that's what Dev and I use when we uh, set up stations all over the place, introducing amateur radio to young people and showing off the station. Um, we use my PK-232 pack rat, and we did weather facsimile downloads and so on. My unit is in my BCD pocket. The batteries are checked, and I'm off for a dive. Take care and see you soon.